Back in 2005, I actually ended up having um, part of my lung removed, and through that I was in hospital for quite a long while. I was having help with patches, but I think it was about a year I stopped. I suffered long term with this sort of mental health, and I just went through a really difficult stage in life, and I then just reach back to the tobacco. I tried when I stopped previously patches. I mean, I was still, when I started to smoke, I was still using the patches. But I was actually taking the patches off to have a cigarette. To me, the patches didn't work. I was aware before about the possibility of vaping. I mean, available on the NHS. Mm -hmm. If that comes along, then that is something I would like to try when I was approached in a &E. It's like, yeah, definitely. So I was in the waiting room. A nurse came out. She said that she'd looked at my notes and she saw that I was a smoker because she had a chat with me. She said, you know, I'll be taking an hour and I had another two hours to wait for the blood test. I was like, that's fine. I've personally been thinking about trying to quit smoking at some point. I had put a lot of thought into it or made any attempts at that stage. Like it was kind of like a, oh, this could come in handy later on. I sit down in the end after the lady spoke to me like I'm slam stop smoking and it's gonna give you a try and pack this program for six months to join see how you go. Why not stop on your mother got try it? The main thing was the lady said that um, it's up to you and it's your choice. It's just like you're giving an opportunity to actually do something for yourself. Yeah. No one's ever said that, it's a clear uh, kick tip. You know, there was no pressure, but the way, I think the way that she approached it made such a difference as opposed to, I think like anything, if somebody tells you, you have got to, or you are not certain to fail. I struggle with strangers, so I felt that it was a little bit daunting sort of situation, but they really put me at ease straight away. I did feel comfortable. I guess being in the hospital, it was sort of like a, a lifesaver as such. And I think because, you know, I had to continue, I had no option other than to do that for almost a week, that by the time I then got out of hospital, I was then sort of used to it. I came home and that was one of the first things I'd done. I put my papers and I boxed them all up and put them in the back of the drawer and continued with the, the vape. When I was chosen, you know, and I got all the stuff, and I take it away, I said, but I can't, I can't promise that I will do it. And, you know, that's how it was left. When I came home, I put it in the bottom of my broken wardrobe, um, and I actually closed it to play to my mind. It was actually the following Sunday. I thought, I'm going to take this out and have a look. And I took it out and I sat and read all the stuff and took the the game paid the box. I thought, I'm going to do that tomorrow. That was it. But it was twice that I was like, oh, I could do with a cigarette. Within about a minute, two minutes, I just, I just get the deep and I, you know, Go help the lender with the beep and that passes. I didn't admittedly start using the e cigarettes right away. Carried on smoking, kept the bags. On the day of the Queen's funeral, I had ran out of cigarettes the day before all the shops were closed. So I essentially turned my house upside down. And then I came across the bag and um, I thought, let's cut it off cold turkey. And I went straight to the cigs and I haven't smoked a cigarette since. That day. I was in the hospital, then my like, tobacco finished, then I thought, hey, hold on, I was the day, so we need to go and um, buy more tobacco. Let's uh, do the vaping, see how it goes. From there, I'll be honest with you, I stayed with it. That was pretty straightforward, that e cigarette. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I liked it, because it was so straightforward. And it's just a clicking cartridge, and then inhale, pretty much. And if it doesn't work, charge. And it's 
you know where he's charging because he's got the flash indicator. So. You know, not even having to sort of press a button either, and, and, and it was just easy to change, didn't have to fill with a liquid or things. I, I was really impressed. There's so many people that have actually asked me about this particular vape because um, they tried my vape and they actually went on and ordered kits because it's not a big vape, you know, it's light. Come on, it's expensive as well on a weekly basis. Like I smoked roll ups, it's seventeen pounds something. A lot of money. Uh, all I did to pay it's um, six pounds uh, something for two little pots. And that's like a really great for a cigarette or anything. So through through the worst time in my life, Dan, I am so shocked, but really proud as well, that I was still continuing to vape. It's <laughs> I, I don't feel you owe me any thanks for taking part or succeed, you know, uh -huh. all the thanks comes from me, because I know you, know, you have done me, you know, a huge service. My GP, who um, I've known for years, she said, I'm not going to need what the renal specialist to say. And one of the things that stopped smoking, I said, I stopped smoking five months ago. And she just, she couldn't speak. And she went quiet and I said to her, are you still there? She said, I cannot believe this. And I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs>